to day two of the RGB. Uh, everything is open today. Um, yesterday we did some broadcasting, but only a small portion of the floor was open, but now everything is open. It's massive. So today we're going to take you on a complete tour of the showroom for the RGB. And to give you an idea where we're starting, right over here is the entrance, and then we're going to move you through uh, Atari Age and then just take you through the showroom floor into the arcade first. So let's go on a tour of the RGB 2024. So on the left is, on your right, is the registration. Pick up some bags and things. And on the left is the Atari Age booth, as we showed yesterday. Is the Atari booth? We've got some developers at their games playing now, selling a whole bunch of games. Uh, jumping at shadows, sold out immediately yesterday on Friday. Immediately. As it should. It's yeah. an amazing game.
turned off as well. Check, check. This was off, mine was off. Did it charge? Hopefully things are better. Better, 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 better. Okay. Things are better now. So it just, it, did it run out of charge? I don't think so. It just got Because these off. were fully charged. Okay. It just got turned off for some reason. Maybe it turned off there and it turned this, the, the receiver Much off? Much better now. Okay. okay. Well, let so let us know. Scream if, in the chat if it happens again. Yeah, let us know right away. I'm monitoring the chat. Okay, so I'll start my ramble about the arcade again. All right, you go um, ahead. So Fridays are the are the day to definitely come to the arcade because, as you can see, it is absolutely full. Can't, Tanya's going Dutch angle. <laughs> Just being stylistic, 90s MTV style. Um, yeah, because on Saturday, that's the big day. Everyone's here. So you want to come in on Friday or you're going to get the leftovers of the arcade games. And it gets worse after the showroom floor closes on the Saturday because then, then everybody flocks from the showroom floor over to the arcade after 5 p.m. So they also have the World Tetris tournaments. And this is literally the World Tetris Tournament. The best of the best come here. You don't have to put me in the shot every time. <laughs> the best of the best on Tetris come here. So if you want to see, you can angle it down a bit. Angle it down a bit, don't need to see on it. Um, so I think we saw the kid yesterday that figured out how to break and beat Tetris. It was absolutely astounding, all the amazing Tetris ga uh, gamers here. It culminates on sat uh, Sunday, uh, and last year they shut the event down, and they were trying to clear people out because the Tetris championship went on afterwards, after the time that they were trying to close it. And they were trying to shuffle people out and they are stealing people's chairs, trying to get them out. Don't do that. So there, there's the guy who beat Tetris, Blue Scooty, I believe. So good luck against him. <laughs> okay, let's move on. No, I'm not sure what the camera is, what's happening with the camera. So this Yars Rising training program game that Atari has at their booth. Yes, um, what it is is a repackaged Yars Revenge, and it was given out to um, online streamers to promote Yars Rising. And right now it's being given away to people who spend over a hundred dollars at the Atari Age booth um, and you're given a ticket and the ticket gives you a chance to win um, a copy of the Yars Rising or Yars Rising Atari 2600 game and what it is is repackaged Yars Revenge but it does have a different label and a different box and Al had 40 of them here for the event uh, to give away. I'm not sure if he's giving them away all today or if it's half today and half tomorrow. So that's what's happening with that. <laughs> Yars revengeizing. Guest director Tim Burton. Yeah. And now we'll just give an overview of uh, the console area where you can have some free play consoles. Uh, going from Atari 2600 all the way up to modern consoles. I'm not sure if they go into like the PS4 era. Um, I see some Game Cubes. I see some N64s. I see some Saturns. I see some Wii's. And let's see what else they have here. Some more N64s. I see some original Xboxes. Um, 
Super Nintendos, Nintendos, some light gun games. Um, some more Xboxes. And is anything that you guys want me to focus in on more, just let me know and we can do that. Uh, some Sega Genesis there. Some more Saturns. Got uh, some Neo Geo minis. Um, oh, we've got some mini consoles here as well. Of course, they would have uh, lots of games on them to choose from. The regular consoles would have just one game constantly plugged into them, I believe. And uh, I think that we're going to move into the vendor section. So let's actually start in the corner there. And I think this area is the staging area to repair arcade games. Now the vendor area is massive, so we're going to loop around. Yes. There is some method to the madness. So this wasn't open yesterday, this whole area. Oh, here's some more consoles. Cute little tiny TV there. PlayStation 3. Oh, it's a cute little TV. What is it playing? Outrun. Perfect. We saw this karaoke TV today. Where it had a microphone, a black and white TV, and it had a camera mounted on the top. So sing karaoke and I guess record yourself to a VCR at a video output yeah. and it was super and it was a CRT it was super cute so let's move on down to the to the far corner and then we'll show you what's happening in the vendor area How's it going? The wires fighting you still? Um, a tiny bit. Okay. I guess it feels any kind of pull. It just, yeah. So. Right. Sorry about the crazy angles. So we should go down there. The next one. Right to the end. Okay. Okay. So we're going first, right? Because over in the far end, there is the autograph area, and there's also a recreation of a Blockbuster store. Because uh, Portland has the very last Blockbuster store in existence in Bend, Oregon. So they've recreated a Blockbuster store. Atari booth! Now, we did Atari booth yesterday, so if you want to look at a full uh, view of the Atari booth, we showed off all of the new games, we showed all the boxes. How have you seen any plus cards for sale or on display? No, I haven't seen any plus cards anywhere. I mean, they may be here, but I didn't see them. Uh, yes, there are a number of Vectrexes here. I think I saw like four or five Vectrexes actually. Oh, Arena Foot used to work for Blockbuster Video. So this will bring you bring back uh, great memories for you. So this is the um, personalities area, the autograph area. A lot of them are voice actors or actors in video games. And of course they're of an era that I didn't really get into because once you got to the era of people that were able to do voice acting or being in video, in video games, like FMV video games, that was not really my jam. <laughs> So I'm not super familiar with any of these people, except for like, you know, maybe people that did voices or were in like Mortal Kombat. Of course, these people are very familiar. Person who does the voice for Bowser and people in Super Mario Brothers. 
or the person who did the voice for Dirk the Daring in Dragon Slayer, or Kimberly in Space Ace. Yeah, those are pretty well-known names. And uh, we'll do the computer section next. Not next, but after the um, Blockbuster video. So in the Blockbuster video, they have the sign out front. They've got a lot of posters. They've got DVDs. They've got um, VHS tapes. Oh, thank you for the subscription, Dan. Thank you so much. And they've got a lot of um, memorabilia from uh, Blockbuster as well. You can buy cups. You can buy um, popcorn buckets as well. Good old Titanic. Yeah. So none of these are for rent, but <laughs> you can They're look at them. They're, They're for display. display. But they do have a VHS swap here. They Was do. it on Sunday? Uh, no, it's today. I it's think today. I saw it. Yeah. So I guess bring in your VHS tapes yes. and come home with other VHS tapes. Yeah, um, yeah it's pretty much uh, recreates the experience. Oh, there you go. You can, you can buy pre-owned games for $19.99. <laughs> But not really. <laughs> They're just faking it. Some VHS tapes. There's like a kind of a Disney area. We certainly had tons of VHSs back in the day. Thank you, Columbia House. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think I only use Columbia House for uh, cassette tapes. Never ordered movies from them. So yeah, all, all your mummy and matrix needs you can get here. And it's kind of funny, it's like they're, they're, they're touting it as like, oh my God, it's so retro. I still buy Blu-rays. Yeah, <laughs> so not so retro for me. But of course, like so most people stream, stream movies now. End of late fee signs. Ooh, I didn't see any of those. That would have been a good one. You can show some of the cups there. So if you want the last blockbuster, Bend Oregon cup there. Tanya likes the clear ones. I do. They're silicone, by the way. Yep, squishy. Very durable, won't break. So let's make our way over to the uh, retro computer section. And they aren't, they aren't for sale. But just for display. Just for display, and they've got games loaded on them. So you can play the games. And there's experts here um, able to help you out on uh, what, what these computers were all about. There was one guy near the uh, Commodore 64. He couldn't answer my question that I've been trying to get an answer to. Why was port 2 on the C64 the default port for most games? So he may not have been the C64 expert, but he was manning the booth. And I always thought it might be because joystick port one actually put characters on the screen when you moved the joystick up, down, left, right. Here's a tournament area, and so their big tournaments are fighting games this year. So there's a huge list of fighting games. If I can get a close up of the sign. Oh yeah. Should be on both sides, maybe. So they have Tekken 8, Street Fighter 6, Guilty Gear Strive, Virtual Fighter 5, Street Fighter 3, Third Strike, Guilty Gear XX Accent Core, Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat, Rivals of Ether, Rivals of Ether 2, Tekken 8, Street Fighter 6. So this is the place to be if you are uh, a fan of fighter games. You can uh, test your prowess. So lots of systems. There's that really obscure uh, system, the Atari 800XL. <laughs> well, know and love. Uh, C64, Texas Instruments. Uh, Tandy. Some uh, beautiful Macs. 
Remember where I worked at an ISP and we had one of those Mac machines yeah. for support? One of what are those those clear see-through ones? IMAX, are they? IMAX, yep. Yeah. And for anybody that phoned in about a Mac of that era, uh, VIC-20, they've got some C64 minis, so they're cute. We have one of those at home. There's a VIC-20. It's got a couple games on cartridge. Rat Race is in there. Thank you, Carl G, for resubscribing. And some uh, Amiga minis and a real Amiga there. And they've got a ColecoVision Atom. I actually had the whole ColecoVision Atom at one point, really? including the printer really? and the box. It was huge. And I had to get rid of it because I had no room left to store it. It was the biggest box ever. And there's so many problems with the Atom I read afterwards that it's like a nightmare system to use. Um, what else do we have? A Texas Instruments with actually um, some hard drives and a printer and a phone coupler if you wanted to dial into your favorite Texas Instruments BBS. The clear ones are for prisons. Yeah, I remember that. Um, who did the special on the clear ones? Was it, um, it wasn't the 8-bit guy. Who was it? Some more Texas Instruments back there. Okay, let's make our way over to um, the showroom floor. Yep. Yeah. And they have a uh, Lego section actually over there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we should pop in there because they actually have some Lego of some Atari 2600 games. So that's kind of relevant. So we should definitely do that. And general arcade games as well. They've got one for Defender, Duck Hunt, but here's the uh, Atari 2600 ones. It's the Atari Tribute, it's called. Got one for Ice Hockey there, um, Star Master there, and of course, Combat. The Combat, the first 2600 game that came included. We've got an arcade Frogger, Tanya's favorite game, Cubert, <laughs> right there. Um, some really good Joust ones. I didn't see those before. Really nice birds there. That's really, really cool. Lego Atari 2600, yeah. Tetris, just general ones, Minecraft, some portraits. So people are making portraits just from a flat Lego board and using different color. That is awesome. Some very, very creative ones. And over here, is it over here? There was an area where they, they had a Star Wars Lego arcade. So there's a bunch of stormtroopers playing arcade games. I, it's gotta be here. Oh, Lego QR code, there you go. So if anybody saw that, they could uh, find out where that goes to. Probably Port Lug. Some really elaborate ones here. Storming the beaches. Some platypuses. <laughs> and the bus from Speed, the movie Speed. Is there Keanu Reeves on the top of there? Yeah, I think so. And Sandra Bullock standing on the top of the bus. Yeah, the Lego art is really cool. There's a whole bunch of Lego, Lego Dimensions, it says. So I guess all the characters from the video game. Yeah, you can rewind it later and, and do the QR. I'm far away now. Some really creative Lego stuff. And there's this huge one at the end. It's like an island with a beautiful tree the on elven, top. The elven lighthouse. Up.
Yeah, I'm pretty sure the uh, QR code, oh, here's another QR code if they want to do it right now. Okay, we're going on the QR code, so get ready. If you want to go to it, it probably just goes to their Instagram or website for Port Lug. Okay. Oh, more? Oh, yeah, I think this side might have the... Oh, there it is. There's the Stormtroopers Arcade over to the right. Wow. Death Star Village. It's huge. So you've got a t different sections for, like, if you think, like, Stormtroopers have a life too, so they have to go to the arcade. And they have to go to the dentist, and they have to, yeah, get their dry cleaning done. So all the things you don't see in the movies. That's right, behind the scenes. They have lives. They're real people, that's too, right, right? That's right. My favorite course is the Emperor's Throne. Oh, nice. That's awesome. <laughs> the Imperial Throne. And the daycare. Yeah, where are the kids? Do they just leave their families? No, there's actual families on the Death Star. Thank so you so much. So out to our expo here in May. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much. You see all this plus thousands more. Oh, wow. So, an expo dedicated to this, all this. This is our big event once a year that we have. Oh, excellent. Wonderful. Oh, wow. So, if anybody wants to see lots and lots of Lego, lots of Lego. this is the place to go. Yeah. So, you ever watch uh, Lego Masters? No. Oh, no. <laughs> Tell us about it. it. Okay. I think you can get it on Paramount. Okay. You can watch the reruns, but uh, two of our members have been contestants on that show. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So, best of the best. Best of the best. In fact, one of them even got hired by Lego. Oh, wow. And he moved his family to Denmark. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. So, we're going to go to the showroom floor now. Oh, Vitoko decoded the QR code. So it goes to portlug.org. So if you want to learn more about the Portland um, Lego scene, that's the place, that's the place for you. I think maybe I should have set up my microphone, but we'll do it tomorrow. So there's a Jaguar there. An Odyssey. And lots of booths with art, and here's one with um, some wood art. The wood burnt? Are they burn cords? No, they're drawn on uh, yeah uh, they have this beautiful um, pac-man oh yeah yeah it's pac-man maze right feels like i'm flying by these things oh we'll never get done it would take hours if we stopped and talked to everyone we'll be we'll be stopping and chatting tomorrow when we go to specific booths and we'll probably stop at like interesting ones that we want to get some more information on. But today, today we're just flying through. There's some Atari 5200 cartridges. Um, the representation of Atari cartridges is there's a smattering here and there. A fair amount of Atari 2600 cartridges. Uh, a lot of commons, though, of course. So which way do we want to go? Our Around and in that way. Go in this way. Get a ZPH logo in wood. Ooh, that would be nice. You'd have to commission that. Do we know anybody who works with wood? I don't know. We, we know people with 3D printers, of course. That's what he's for. Oh, the neon, neon-esque signs. Obviously not real neon, because that's very expensive, very hot, and very breakable.
And I think this is, oh, showing off the signs. I do, the signs are signing. Some really good pins here. Yeah, no lack of pins at, at PRG. Yes, Brett Weiss, Brett Weiss, right behind us. Yep. I think this is the personality row for YouTubers. Yep. You can get uh, signed things here. So lots of like general booths of people selling stuff. All manner of things. And we did do so, we did get some pickups today. Um, I got a Neo Geo AES today. I was very excited about that. I've been wanting one for a long, long time. Um, See an Odyssey 2 in box there. Um, oh, yeah, an Atari 5200 in box back there. Hard to tell until you open it how many ports it has on the front because they, uh, they tend to lie with how many ports there are <laughs> on the boxes. Or, and especially whether it's a um, a heavy six or a light six or and how many switches on it. They were just using boxes wherever they could at that point. And over, oh, I'm running away from Tanya. So we've got the Songbird booth. We're gonna be returning back to them tomorrow. And the reason we're gonna be chatting tomorrow is because of this. It's really, really busy today. It's out of control. Yep. We'll get more in depth tomorrow with with all their stuff, but we'll do a flyby. Flyby of their games on offer here. Oh, we'll talk, we'll be talking to Carl tomorrow. Pan up, you'll be able to see him there. There's Carl there. Lots and lots of booths selling all eras of games. So let's go through here. Yeah, lots of lots of beautiful art. I'm gonna stick near you because well, it's, it's then I can see what you're showing. Yeah, I, uh, you point me I, to whatever I you keep want running to away. Like yeah. There's Atari Boy 2600, uh, graphics extraordinaire, creator for a lot of uh, Atari age games. So let's loop around here and quickly show the Audacity Games booth. And we'll be talking with them tomorrow in depth a bit more. Yeah. There's Gary and Dave and the back of Dan with his Hawaiian shirt, of course. <laughs> And let's just loop around and get a shot of it. Oh, yeah, there's uh, Casey's Gold. First looks at it. Looks pretty good. Oh, he's got some uh, Audacity artwork back there, too. I guess that's a poster, framed poster. And they've got uh, Alien Abduction, they've got Circus Convoy available uh, right now. Hello, Dan. Hi, how are you, James? Good, how are you? Just doing a quick tour of the whole place. We'll be back tomorrow to do some more in-depth talking with you guys. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. I'll send you this version next week. Excellent. The uh, Western Gold, uh, Ghost Towns in it and the Gold Mines. Ooh. So it's much more expanded than what you bring. Yes. Set. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. So we'll be back tomorrow to talk with Dan some more and learn excellent. more about Casey's Gold. Thank you, sir. You bet. There's Gary. There's Dave. 
whole bunch of awesome patches and some actual gold. <laughs> gold candy, excellent. That does double duty. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, some ads for Circus Convoy. Very dramatic. Okay, let's keep it moving. Lots of boots with very creative artwork. Yeah. Here's somebody who's selling uh, tenuously related uh, merchandise. <laughs> Here's our, to the left, we've got uh, some, some mysterious dudes. I don't know who these guys are. No. Never seen them before You've in my never life. Seen any of these people? No, this yeah. what do you, what what do you make here? There we go. <laughs> Turbo Arcade go. represents. Go. There we go. Yeah. Of course this is Champ Games. Yeah. Wait, the right time you got everybody here. Yeah, that's right, the whole crew. Yeah. Yep. And now there's this, this game we've never like seen. It. Oh yes, yes. Oh, Let's spiders. show it off. Spiders, Spiders really cool. Arcade. It is amazing Jesse's shooter. Take my, uh, my high score. Oh. Take one game. Uh, you getting close? You getting close? So if you haven't seen, if you've seen the screenshots of Spiders Arcade that Champ Games has put out, this is the game in actuality. It is incredible. Oh. Arena Foot says, Steve! Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, Arena. <laughs> All right. So, hey, Arena. Na Nathan. <laughs> oh, yes. Nathan on Instagram? Yeah. Nathan says, Slackers, shouldn't John be home programming? Yeah, you're a big <laughs> No, he's trying to sell some games here. Exactly. We have to keep, <laughs> the, uh, keep, everything keep, keep everything moving. Exactly. There you go. There's Nathan commenting on the stream. I'll try it. I'll play now again. Uh, we can, we can switch off. We all have to play one more set. Yeah, we miss you, Nathan. Uh, uh, yeah, next year. Next year. He's got to be here. Through here, he can. Hey, Nathan. How's it going? <laughs> hey, it's the retro paparazzi. That's right. No pictures. No pictures. But we'll be back at this booth tomorrow to, to talk more in depth when it's a little calmer on a Sunday. Excellent. Yep. Oh, what is this? Let's. Oh, yeah. They, people are asking about this. So yeah, like let's that. see, this is Yars Rising, a brand new game <laughs> from Atari. Nope. There we go. So Jess amazing specs. That's right. You need a very high-end computer to, to play this 2600 game. Um, yeah, it's uh, Yars Revenge repackaged. Yeah. It's it's pretty cool there. It's a nice packaging giveaway. It is nice. Yeah. <laughs> it is very nice packaging. But we'll come back and, uh, oh, there's all the prices. And we've got some new games. Ruby Q, Star Castle Arcade, Juno First, The End, and Stratavox. Ooh, they've been adopted. Oh yeah, that's good. Right beside the Tutum, Tutum, Tutankham Arcade. No pictures, only autographs. There's the boxes from Champ Games. They've got quite a catalog now. Yep. Some t shirts. We got a turbo. Oh, and a Tutum Tutankham arcade shirt in blue and black. We will continue on. Oh, yeah, it's, it's crowded. Oh, should I sell my Channel F? Look how much it's going for. 500 bucks, wow. That's crazy. Mine's in much better condition. Oh, we can retire. <laughs> That's awesome. And they have some, uh, some loose ones. I only collect them in uh, box. But, uh, ooh, do I have checkers? Should I buy the checkers for $2,000? Yeah, they get expensive. That's why I don't have a complete set of Channel F. <laughs> I have uh, all the cheap ones, let's say. I was looking for them. I'll have to mod, uh, mod my Channel F uh, so I can actually play it on uh, without running it through a VCR. Oh yeah, that's a that's a good thing to mention. Yeah, lots of uh, vinyl releases and multiple booths. Some of them are like chiptune related. Um, some are video game. Like video game yeah. uh, soundtracks. Some are chiptune uh, musicians. Um, lots of indie um, developers here having their own booths as well. 
on various platforms. This is an NES game. Lots of video game related merchandise as well. Here's some cups. Oh yeah, yeah. Some Pokemon oriented uh, booth there. Lots of generic booths. Oh, let's go over to our, our friends over here with the t-shirts. Yeah. What's the name of this booth? Oh, they don't have their sign up. Yeah, they have the new Sound Blaster shirt, which is very striking. It is awesome looking. Uh, they've got some Ultima 4 shirts as well which are really, really nice. Obviously, uh, Apple version of it. The C64 had different colors than that. Some uh, loading shirts. Um, Channel F, F is for effing expensive. Uh, yes, very expensive. Some of these systems, I'm really glad I got them when I got them. Because if I tried to get some of them now, I would be in very big trouble. This one's really cool for anybody who did PC gaming back in the 90s. So you had to make sure your uh, PC was not using too much energy, even though those were, those were space heaters back then. And they have shirts from years past. We've bought a number of shirts from these guys. Uh, yes. <laughs> Just doing a tour. Ah, camera! Hey, Dave. <laughs> Dave Marley, of course, passed by then if he was in camera there. He's got his new game, Frazzled. We're going to be talking with him tomorrow as a developer at the Atari Age booth going in depth with a bunch of developers at Atari H Booth, at Songbird, and Audacity, and Champ Games, of course. And here we go, John Hancock. Hey, John, at his booth selling his stuff. We'll be, we'll be talking with, we'll be talking with John, talking with John more in depth tomorrow. As, yeah, excellent. When it's a little bit more calm. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't. Uh, yeah, morning's good. Yeah. Morning. That's right. Yeah. So John's got his games, including his new game for yeah, this. Uh, oh yeah, I want to see the screenshots of that. And uh, yep, and uh, it's got IntelliVoice. Oh, so, nice bonus. And it's got my it's got my own recordings that are separate from everything else on there. Like, oh, very nice. So, and then and then the really 7800. And that has the Omaha sound. You can play it through the 2600 plus. Yep. Daryl Gunther did like his own tape. Yeah. And really nice, uh, really nice variation. To game play. Yep. So we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Get some games sold for you. <laughs> Thanks, John. Hey. Yes. Hey. How's it going? A couple times. I'm like saying I got it. Not right till I say hi. So. Oh, of course. Just yeah. Up at and all that stuff. Yeah. Don't have any stickers on me. I would have given oh, you some stickers I, and I, a coaster. I, you know what I'm oh, going? I'm going for the world high score and free stickers. Oh, excellent. Well, this way. is the place to uh, this is the place to do it if you're going for the high score. Here, yeah. one step closer yeah. to your high score. Show the sticker Yay. to the crowd. There we go. There we go. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, it was almost going to blend by your game. I don't really know tons about it. Oh, the zero page homebrew game? Yeah. It's a two player only. I know so make sure you have a second player to play it with. There's oh. no AI in it. But it's got cats in it, so that's a big selling point. Yeah. Zero page homebrew the yes. game. Yes. I got to make my own game. That was made by somebody else, but I'll, I'll eventually get, get my own game on the. Yeah, I was saying yesterday, I walked the, in and I saw your cartridge because I know you guys are. You know, yeah, yeah, but, but mine's, 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 mine's got a Pac-Man in it, so Atari Age is a little, I won't be able to. <laughs> it's too simple. i got to make a big game, a really great game that people will really love. There's so many Pac-Lines out there. But, like, the thing is, 
I've been focusing for 10 years just make a game and then people will buy it just to support you. They will, that's true. I mean, yeah. I mean we put our, ca our, our cats are in the game that somebody else made for us. So any game I make, I'll have to put cats in it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I would do. I mean, you, you have great stuff. But... Yeah, just make the game. I know I had to. I will. Yeah, that's my goal next year. Is like I, know, is, is I make games. Yeah. Some are better than others. This is my best release. I sold 300 copies. Wow. So uh, that's pretty good. And I, I've had it for 10 years now. So yeah. Uh, this, this must be doing pretty good. Well, it's it's a fun puzzle game. It's a 7800 release. Yeah, it's just almost 7800. It's yeah. A yeah, that's right. 2600. Everybody has a 2600. Yeah, that's the bigger seller. That's the one I'm programming for is 2600 because that's my first love. And this is coming out in Evercade, so I'm really cool that. That's cool. So that's really cool. That, that means that's a cool system. Yeah, and that's done well for me. Um, Thanks yeah, for the I, Safe yeah. travels. Working with Champ Games on a possible collaboration. That's cool. That's really nice. We'll, we'll see. I have a great parody yeah, yeah. of myself in a game <laughs> that will make fun of myself. You got the branding going really good here. So, and I'm, yeah. I, I work closely with Corey Kramer. So oh, he does nice. All my, he does all my art. Time Salvo and Ninja Wall Jump. He's the artist. So, oh, nice. So I'm going to... Um, they work with Corey Kramer, so they really like it. They really like that. Yep. I think this will be a good game. I we'll have to flush it out and play it and, and get some feedback. Uh -huh. so. Keep me up to date with that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be back tomorrow to talk more. Sounds good. Yep. Bye bye. Some some chaos of audio and visual uh, <laughs> uh, disconnect there. Sorry, chat. Sorry. Oh, Arena, for we'll talk more with John tomorrow about um, the Intellivision box. Yeah. More interviews. Yeah. In-depth interviews. We. Can't do it today. I didn't bring my like microphone to mic other people, but of course we have to stop and say hi. So, oh, so many stuff. Oh yeah, we already got two stuffies. Which did we get? Oh, we got just a, a star, star. Mario Star and a Kirby. Mario Star and a Kirby. They were too cute to pass up. We'll probably um, pick up. Oh, let's uh, do a quick look at the television revolution. For all your Intellivision needs, here we go. And there's uh, the Intellivision Blockham Sockham that we were just looking at with uh, John Hancock. And they've got a cool one that is very intriguing. Pixel Brothers, and it is truly Pixel Brothers, with like pixels jumping around. So that's tempting, tempting to pick up. Donkey Kong 3, Mermaid, Tron Legacy, Beauty and the Beast Pro, Space Invaders, Voice Anthology. I guess that has all the voice games, like B-52 Bomber, all included. There's a meeting of the minds that going on there <laughs> at the television booth. Oh my god, they have so many people behind the, behind the tables. They are fully manned up for this, <laughs> for this convention. I actually had something pretty cool around here I wanted to show. Um, if you collected comics back in the 80s, uh, you were bombarded with ads for all the... Don't have to show me. Show this. <laughs> you were bombarded with <laughs> ads for video games. So I recognize all of these from my uh, collecting days of, of comics. And of course all the Atari, Atari ads as well. So they're selling new games and they've got old games for sale here as well. I'll probably stop by and talk with them tomorrow too. So should we head down this way or should that? Those cool mini mini arcades. Yeah, Tanya really wants one, but <laughs> which one did they sell out of already? It was um, Galaga, right? But were they like sold out, sold out, or just sold out here? Yeah. There's plenty of games, lots of generic tables selling their wares.
which is good because if you want to pick up a specific title or a console that you're missing, uh, there's tons of tables for that. Dan says he remembers the video game ads in comics. So this is Quarter Arcades, very cool name. I'm not sure if they're quarter size, but because um, they seem a little bit smaller than quarter size. Maybe one eighth size. And it's very full in there. We'll try and uh, try and get a peek in there. They've got. Oh yeah. So, got Zookeeper here. So let's uh, put some quarters in. Are you able to see it? Come on, start the game. Of course, I only know this from Champ Games release, so I actually can play it. I don't know how well. So it's got the tiniest, tiniest little joystick. Way too small for adult hands, so Serena Yeah, they're super tiny. But, great display piece, that's for sure. Yeah, like, and these aren't like, like I was looking at the Galaga one, and I was thinking, oh, they're probably going to put the NES Galaga on it, but these are like arcade versions of them, so. You know you're going to get uh, a good version of the game. So they have really big titles here, like yeah. really well-known titles, so they've got a lot of licensing. Awesome looking, um, uh, so they're about $250, $300. Yeah. Oh, there's some coming out. Okay, so the Zookeeper is not out yet. Oh, Bubble Bobble, Galaxian, Galaga, Pac-Man, Dig Dug. Some game called Polybius. Might make you go crazy if you play it. And they, oh, Pepsi Machines. Just move in a bit and it'll uh, focus on that. There you go. Tiny little cans. Incredibly adorable. Yeah, super adorable. Um, Opcode Games. Somebody was asking if um, if anything new from Opcode Games, but they weren't uh, they weren't here this year. No. I I was talking uh, with them uh, about a week ago, but uh, no, unfortunately they're not here this year. They were here last year, but we didn't unfortunately didn't get uh, to talk to them last year. Anything else of note that? Um, we should head over to that you remember? That isn't just like a generic kind of booth. Oh, yeah. I really want to play that game that I was talking about. Oh, no. Content match. <laughs> oh, thank you for resubscribing, Money, Buddy Funster. What were you saying? No, I was just saying the corner. Yeah, that's that's the exciting corner. <laughs> Makes it easy for interviews tomorrow. Oh yeah, these these are the things that caught Tanya's attention. The sh the shiny things. And get chicken earrings. <laughs> Little kitty earrings. Yeah, so we'll probably go and go through all those on Sunday. And uh, look for things that that aren't games, because they have tons of this stuff. Oh, video game socks! I didn't see these before. Uh, Mario stuff and Pac-Man, Pikachu, very cute. Yeah, so we came in early yesterday, early today to. Look for things that we wanted personally that you knew that were like one-offs. 
Now I'm really looking for a marquee from Galaga. There was a couple of original marquees. These are reproductions. Um, so if you wanted to reproductions, posters, and they have like mini light up ones too, which are very cute. And if you're ever in the market for a four foot tall Pikachu, this, uh, this booth has it for you. Yeah, we should show the Vectrex stuff. Yeah, I know. It's unfortunate. Okay, we'll make our way that way and then you just And this is Sean Kelly's booth. Everything you need uh, for Vectrex is here, including a Euro in converted Vectrex so you can get the look of Vectrex and uh, play it in North America. And a very stylized Vectrex here with Mindstorm. Oh yeah, wood grain. There you go. Oh, a bunch of the older titles there and some of the homebrew titles. This is one we're going to be playing on the show coming up soon. So, it's really funny behind the scenes. Uh, I think we played Vector Blade last time, maybe? Yes. Oh, a re oh, there is a carry case here. Actually, if you, yeah. we'll go over to that and we'll show it. Yeah, I was, I, maybe since we're here. And we've got overlays, reproduction overlays. overlays. Um, for older games and some creative new ones as well. Full set, $255 for all the overlays. For 28 of them or $10 each. Yeah, so if you're missing any of them, that's a good way to get them all at once. So here's the boxes that Arena Foot was asking about. Okay, so dust covers go over it. You can buy the dust covers. Okay, so here we go. Ships the week of October 5th, but you can order it here. So it's $50 plus $10 shipping. And then this is a cover and this is a case. Yeah, actually that's not bad, $20. I know, I was like, that's a pretty good dust that's cover. That's tempting. I may want to pick that up so mine don't get dusty because I've got two, two Vectrexes. Um, do they have different? Oh, it's reversible, so you can have one European version and one North American version. So we'll probably come back and buy those. Yeah. Yeah. To keep my uh, keep my Vectrex uh, nice dust free as it's sitting on the shelf collecting dust. And there's actually some Atari parts over here. We should show this. Good. How are you, John? Good. Good. Hanging in. Yeah. Good seeing you. Good seeing you too. Yeah, we're just doing a walk of the floor, showing everybody out there what's here if they can't make it here. It's a way to do it, you know. Yeah. So we've got yeah, some. Get <laughs> yeah. Get all the parts. Actually, just ordered these a couple months ago, so it would have been much easier just to buy it here. Did you order them from us? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Did you put them in yet? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> it's about time. It's easy to buy them, right. but not easy to get the time, time to put them in. Yeah. But I'll probably come back and buy two of those dust covers, those Great. Vectrexes, to put over my Vectrexes. Yeah. My Vectrex eye. What do you call multiple Vectrexes? <laughs> Vectrexes? Vectri? Vectrexes. Vectrexes, okay. Keep it simple. I don't know if that's right or not. <laughs> Yeah, because I've got a couple 5200s that are a little, eh, a little wonky, so yeah, I'll put those in. Nice seeing you. Yep. You bet. Um, what else should we show? Yeah, that was John Hardy. Um, that was over there, and Sean Kelly at the booth. Nice. Oh, and there's a uh, Vectrex over there. Hey, hey. 
Yeah, there's some like really, really expensive stuff on that table. And there was, I think that was the table. There was like a $10,000 um, Nintendo Switcher, I think, before, if that's the table. I think it is. And there's people like standing in front, two people standing in front of it. Which like yeah. being, being very intense. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But there's a nice uh, TurboGrafx-16 arcade, uh, TurboGrafx-16 carry case, which I have. Let's see how much it goes for. I should sell all my stuff. <laughs> that carry case alone is five hundred dollars. What? Yeah. I, that's good to know that my stuff is worth something in case uh, the cats all of a sudden uh, cost us some money. Need some. Need some. Need a cat replacement. Yeah. Oh my God! Prices are out of control. Which way would you like to go next? Um, let's just walk straight down the aisle here. Because I don't know if there's anything else that is really like... Oh, let's go over to that Brazil booth. I'm not sure what that was. I, maybe it's like import Brazil consoles. Okay. Uh, I think we can walk through. Because there was a... It was some Brazil something and I saw it in the listings I'm like are any of our friends from Brazil here but I think maybe it's just a generic Brazil booth where they're selling oh that's that's the one with the handheld um, master system that we're looking at earlier oh is it yeah so that's why it has a whole bunch of Sega stuff oh and this is the one with the that's why this is so cool, because it's all like Brazil things that we've never seen before. I'm like, I've never seen this stuff. What the hell is this? And the, uh, so, very, very cool. There's the CRT with the camera and the karaoke. Oh, I'm on the TV. <laughs> oh, there's Tanya's hand. There's Tanya on the TV. That's really cool. So a lot of really unique stuff here. No, I don't think it's any of the Brazilian um, developers, but like really unique looking. 120 Super Yogos. Games. Nice. So it has built in games in it. That's really cool. So really unique stuff from here from, uh, from Brazil. Oh, there's the big company that uh, releases all the um, Brazilian line of things, Tech Toy. And they've kept uh, some older systems alive forever. So I'm guessing this is all Brazil versions of Maybe things. Not all. Maybe not all, but I think mostly. So here, here's the, the name of the company. So NT Games. I'm not familiar with them. Uh, I don't think they have any uh, homebrew games. So they're not really associated with the homebrew companies. Here's some shiny things. I think Tanya got uh, sidetracked last time we uh, went by this. I had to go back and find her. Yeah, I saw that light gun. Those, uh, you can make an easy conversion converter if you wanted to convert uh, Sega Phaser to uh, an Atari light gun, which I did for three because the uh, Sega light guns are way cheaper than the Atari ones and apparently way more accurate too. So it's a cheap way to do that. So I think we should head back to Atari Age to wrap it up. I think we hit most of the kind of unique um, booths. Arena Foot says, lol, Tanya, shiny. <laughs> Lots of distracting shiny things here. 
And uh, every year after Portland Retro Gaming Expo, we have our own private um, game competition or games oh, yeah. night. Yeah. So this is where we pick up a lot of little, little trinkets for prizes for the top scoring people at our at our games night at our house. So this is a great way to pick up. Oh yeah, we have to come back here because there's some cat toys that we're going to get the kitties. And which ones were we going to get them? I, can't, I don't see them. What were they? Where were they? No, I don't see them. Just the same ones. No, they were something else. I can't remember what they were. Oh well. We'll come back. They'll restock. No, you're thinking of the beautiful Katamari um, Christmas tree ornaments. No, there was. I remember it was that table. And it something was something in particular. in particular that they really. It wasn't sewn in it was like a printed material it was square i can't remember what it was it might be gone uh yeah, let's continue down here it's not as busy so pickups i got uh neo geo aes plus controller i also got a 5200 rollerball as well, so now I can play some games that I've worked, I was not able to play before. Some Ryan Whitmer games that he likes to be the most obscure homebrewer ever by making games for the 5200 that you have to use the rollerball for. And there are exactly five people in the world who have that set up. <laughs> um, I also got a knockoff uh, Sega Genesis 6 button controller. I can't remember why I had that on my list, but I had it on my list. Lots of turbo graphics uh, systems here, I've noticed. A Game Boy for cats. Yes, cat merch. Of course we have to bring something back for the kitties. Okay. So, let's head over to Atari Age. Yeah, we didn't play too many arcade games, unfortunately. That's what usually happens. Big promises, no delivers. Forgetting the. Oh yeah. Yeah, and they had. Oh, they put a price on the Atari 2600 Lego set. Let me just run over and look at that while you show the. So it's uh, 150 for the Atari 2600 Lego set. I'm not sure if that's a good price or not. No. 150. How much? Well, I'm not going to buy it because I have no room for it. But it's cool. Back to the Atari. Yeah, we'll just end off at the Atari booth uh, or the Atari Age booth. Well, both. Because we showed this yesterday. Uh, did we show the games though? Yeah, yeah. A, little a little bit. We did. We'll walk through here. It's visually interesting with the red carpet. And we're back at the Atari Age booth. Oh, and somebody wanted to see... Hey. And then somebody wanted to see the boxes for Lynx games. So, we might as well go over to the Lynx section here. Uh, if I can find it. There's the Jaguar section. Might as well do a pass of these for... I think so. Just do a quick pass over all the boxed games. Actually, we start over there. Over on that side? Yeah. Okay. Those are some of the Atari games. Well, it's my closest we can get. There's some owls over there wrecking our shot. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go around this way. There's the 7800 game pad. All the Atari stuff in one section here. Ed Laden controller. I have a twin stick 7800 Ed Laden controller, some adapters, the Mega 7800. SNES to Atari adapter, 
uh, the Atari Vox Plus, uh, the uh, Jaguar mouse adapter, which I need to do a show on that because um, find which games use the mouse. And here's all the... Oh, they, have they torn down some of those? It looks like they've uh, reduced down the shelving as they've no, sold it. No, no? The shelving was there, but they... Oh, okay. Here's the Jaguar games. At an expo, the answer, is that a little overpriced, is always going to be yes, whether it's souvenirs, shirts, foods, etc., yeah. Gamma Dev says. Yeah, that's why you buy stuff on Sunday, when they're desperate to not bring it back and load it back up into their vehicle. But for the stuff that's going to move, well, you got to buy it anyway at whatever price they say. And here's the 5200 section. Here's the 7800 section here. And these are the uh, older titles for the 7800. And they've got a new section over here. Here's the shiny newness. EXO Collector Mission Kit. Oh, so shiny. I don't know if anything's in it. No. So, we'll show the back of it anyway. Look at that. Beautiful. Muddy Vision. There we go. Gorgeous. Here's the new section with all the new games. Oh, they're sold out of Tober's Nightmare. There's an update. So get them while they're hot. And jumping at shadows. And jumping at shadows. That went. Uh oh. Now Tober's Nightmare is another casualty. All gone. <laughs> Crossed off the list. Good job. <laughs> or something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> filming, filming. Ah, the map. Beautiful. Oh, okay. When they'll be shipping uh, with the it's going to be cloth. Uh, they oh, so. to me because I, I told them I wanted to be able to have maps in the show. So, so a representation. Them, free, and then ship them out the second day to make sure I had them in time. Oh, was nice. Was so this is the size yeah, of? Yeah, 16 by 16, which 16 is by the size 16. the ultimate map for. Oh, okay. And the map, it's nice thick cloth material and have the hemming, the stitching on the edges like the ultimate maps. Oh, nice. I'm excited to see those even fold. But these can roll up. I don't see any rolled up right now. They even sent like cloths for like cloth string that we could use to, to oh. seal the other thing. Nice. So let's see the map for the representation of the string and uh, yeah. actually this material almost looks like it's made of like leather and, and yeah, stitching. Yeah, it's a nice thick, uh, or, uh, thick uh, 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 canvas. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's going to be beautiful. Yeah. I mean, the ones that people will be getting ordering the store will be a little different because they'll be looking at cloth. If I can learn how to tie. So just like that. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, that's really that's good. Kind of cool, yeah. So what is this made of? That's leather. Uh oh, so, yeah, so I'm in trouble. Why? <laughs> oh, vegan? Don't yeah, vegan. Yeah, I, I won't put it in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yum, yum, yum. So, yeah. That's really cool. That Very nice game. packaging. What game is that from? Yum, yum, yum. Yes. Damn That's it. It's a game. It is a game. Oh, no, it's from uh, Mango's Down. Oh, God. Yep, there you go. Oh, that is a game. It is a game. Mango's Down. Right. Is yum, yum, yum. Or remember the Jaguar version? Right. Yum, yum. I use, I use mangoes down in the box. Yes. Because it does the speech great speech plus it's right away. Um, yeah. after each game. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so, so you different. can get a high score yeah, in like there. Playing it. I always end up having to go through a whole It's video. dangerous popping mangoes down into the system yeah, because you can play for a long time. Until also. it crashes and then uh, yeah, yeah exactly. then you're like, damn it. I wish the game was finished. Yep. It makes you sad. One day. Yes, one someday. day. The great hope. <laughs> All right. Yeah, see ya.
Here's the rest of the boxes. Here's the 2600, more 2600, obviously lots. I've lost the chat, so. You've lost it. Yeah, I don't know. Something it, went wrong. Oh, that's jumping around a lot. Oh, okay. Well, we'll do our best. Is that is that the upload speed? Yeah, so that's plenty. And now it's back to normal, but it was at 700 for a second. There. Oh, okay. It was very low. So there might well, have been a bit of a stream issue. At least it stayed connected. Yeah. Let's see if I can get back onto uh, the chat here. There we go. Spies. Yeah, Spies of the Night 2 are, is out from Atari Age. Lovely looking map. Okay, I've got the history. Nobody complained that it cut out for them. Here's all the loose games. And of course this this game with cats game on it. That? I don't know. It's don't got know. a it's got a Tanya on it. It's got a James on it. It's got Erlen, Darcy, and some kitties. Some kitties. Yeah. Zero page home for the game for only $30. And yeah, all the um, cartridge only and manual games. Oh, it's a little bit less uh, populated here, so we can show off the t-shirts. Oh, these are PRG branded ones. 2023 oh. though, they're yeah. from last year. I think. Last year. There's a generic blue one with no uh, PRG on it. I do have one. It must be the blue one. And uh, yeah, so that's all the games. I didn't see any of the Lynx games out. Maybe they'll be out tomorrow, so we'll have to see when those come out. Oh, here we go. It's 2600 plus, paddles, joystick, gamepad, extension, cable. I use those a lot. I think two of mine are bad. I'm going to have to get some more. And the Atari releases so far. We showed all the new ones coming up in November the, uh, yesterday. So we got Mr. Run and Jump, two versions. Outlaw, Fatal Run, Ninja Golf, Food Fight, and Berserk. Ooh, look at that sign. That's a nice sign up there. That's beautiful. Uh, DLC for Sid coming soon for the ZPH. So, um,. Oh, Cyrano Reboot's there. Hey, Cyrano. You'll be happy to know your Jumping at Shadows game is sold out immediately on Friday when the uh, convention opened. So, good job. <laughs> they, had, they should have ordered tons more. Um, yeah, that's amazing. It's really awesome. Hey, Muddy Funster. I wish you could be here. Um, yeah, so that's a quick tour of the showroom floor. Obviously we didn't show every single booth because we'd be here for much more hours than we were broadcasting, but we showed the highlights, said hi to a few people. We'll be saying like hi better because I'll have my microphone tomorrow to put it in people's faces. Um, but uh, today we did just showed a general overview of the showroom floor. But tomorrow, uh, what time are we going to be broadcasting tomorrow? Two o'clock, I think it was. I think it's two. We're seeing one. Yes, there's Atari at 52. That's the uh, thing we're going to go watch the panel. Um, and then at two o'clock or thereabouts, we'll be doing uh, developer interviews with developers that are here, including uh, the fine people at uh, Champ Games and also at Songbird, at Atari Age. Um, see if we can talk to somebody at Atari as well about some of the titles coming up, the Bob DeCrescenzo titles coming up um, in November. And um, also at, we'll be talking with Dan Kitchen and, and uh, Gary and Dave over at their booth as well. And uh, yeah, just walking around again and wrap it up for uh, day three. So that's it, I think, for today. Uh, we can rest our feet and uh, we will talk with you. Oh, switched it. There's Tanya on the camera. And so we're going to rest for the night uh, and go to the meetup tonight at 9 p.m. If you're in the Portland area, we'll be at Ground Control 
Uh, what time is it there now? It is 4.46. Yeah, quarter so to five. Almost five. So calculate that three hours-ish back, but tomorrow. So that's uh, that's when we'll be broadcasting again. You're very, very welcome. Yeah. Gutted to miss the event. Sorry. Yeah, we would have oh, loved no you worries. to have you here as well, Muddy. Um, showing off and talking about your new uh, version of your game. It would have been completely awesome. But well, we're going to sign off, and we'll see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. Goodbye. Bye-bye.